monster has appeared. And is it bomb? No. Is it Kun or Rack? No. It's Shibisu. Shibisu has appeared and Leroro has been awaiting. No, no, no. Memes aside. Um, I have a I have a couple theories, a couple philosophies, some 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 schizo theories that I have after reading, you know, watching Annie's videos. And I feel like no, nah, that's some that's some stuff. My 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 theory basically was like head on things that bomb is supposed to be like this prophesized child that's supposed to show up one day and change the tower and the overall structure and lead the people to paradise. Some kind of like Lisa and guy, some doing shit. But that's that's kind of just besides the point. Last episode was basically um, we're on Evangel's floor. We're doing the test. Um, we figured out the culling to two hundred. Then finding partners of three. We have gotten ourselves Mr. Alligator who calls people turtles, presumably because. You know, alligators hunts turtles and Kun Agero Agni. There is something very important about his full name, which implies that the last name he must be from some kind of important family, right? They made a very good distinction of Kun Agero Agni and how Leroro said we should not trust him. And I think he's kind of right. Kun is way too smart, way too smug, way too cocky. But I believe that he has what it takes to be that cocky and be competent at the same time. And I feel like we're trusting him a little bit too much. I'm not sure. And Rachel, where is she? She left us. She's still nowhere to be seen. Maybe she's, uh, you know, already advanced to the future stages. Maybe she's wearing a different disguise. But right now, I think that we've basically finished off the third or how many tests it was. Basically, the Shinsu wall to see who can get past it. Very cruel realization that you either have this innate talent to handle Shinsu or you don't. And we're moving forward. There's this like room filled with like red chambers, like red panels. And there's like this um, blonde haired dude or person in there. Is that person Ivan Kell? Is this the admin of Ivan Kell's, you know, floor, floor two? Let's begin today's reaction. Rain. My Agero. A princess was chosen, Maria and Princess Zahad. Maria was chosen, right? Kun, Agero, Agni, okay? His own sister was... But he's an Agero Agni. He's not a Za... King Zahad? I thought his own birth daughters are princesses, but this is making it sound like he poaches girls from different families and makes them into princesses? Maria was chosen. But his sister wasn't chosen. Then the entire family. What? His entire family is exiled and dismantled? Because his. F what? The, the entire Kun Agni Agero family is dismantled? Because she wasn't chosen to be a Zahad princess? Battle. We're like a disgraced family? Fooled by Maria and betrayed. This is Maria? This is Maria? Maria that was chosen to be Zahad princess tricked Kun? And then in doing so, she betrayed him and fucked his own- Because he has his other sister, and Maria is a different sister? I'm confused. Wow! That was a lot of shit to fucking unpack! So what did we learn just here? Zahad princesses are not blood-related to Zahad, not necessarily. They get poached from other families. Kun had a sister, Maria. No, Kun had a different sister. Maria is a different sister, right? His own sister wasn't chosen. What will happen to Agero? Maria was chosen. Then what happens to Kun? Isn't it obvious? His own sister wasn't chosen. And if she wasn't chosen, the entire family gets dismantled. This person, Maria, betrayed Kun and his own sister wasn't chosen. Mom tells us to be better. Be always conniving. You can only trust yourself. That's why he's so smart. What the fuck? Hi. That's a lot of lore. Holy shit, what a backstory. Is that Rachel? 
But it's not the actual sky, right? Because, like, the stars can only exist at the top. <laughs> well, it's because we're from, like, the underground, right? We don't... We're from the fucking cave. This fucking alligator's calling us stupid, bro. I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> it's fake sky? Is it, like, a simulation sky? Because we're still in the tower. There's no way the sky actually exists. The stars, right? <laughs> <laughs> Rap, you chill, bro. <laughs> Skies, the star. Okay, the legend. So, that's obviously just a legend. Because, like, Rachel also wanted to see the stars, and it's also from a legend. A leg Who made this legend? Dude, there's an actual boxer here. Look, there's an actual. And there's Zoro. That is straight up Zoro. I swear to God, we saw fucking Gara before from Naruto before too. And here's Zoro in plain fucking sight. <laughs> this is hilarious, the Easter eggs. <laughs> Imitation, fake sky. Got it. It's all byproduct of Shinsu here. We probably gotta get to all the way to the top, huh? That means the rankers have seen the sky, right? Or the stars? What is this? As soon as we start talking about Rachel and about the stars, a cloud just descends upon Kun's face. Hmm. What does this mean? Is Rachel evil? Is Kun evil? What is this? Good question. Because does she actually care about him? No, there's something weird about this relationship and how she just found you and treats you like a pet and how she just left you and now you chase after her like a dog trying to chase after an owner. There is something very odd about this relationship. Rack, chill. <laughs> Rack has to speak useless comedic relief now. Someone died just now? Is this Ivan kill or what? How did you fall asleep so quick? You were just talking and having a conversation. Now he wants Snickers. One second. Why would you even create an account like this? Like, you're so fucking stupid. Like, I'm just gonna permaban you, like, be better. Like, what are you doing? You think you're being funny? Like, you must be like 14 if you think this is fucking funny. Can we trust this dude? There, there's no way we're gonna trust this dude. Look at him, there's no shot. Yeah, you're that smart? Okay. What's the most important clue? There is a timer that shows up. It started at 9. Now it's 319, 320. In 5 minutes, they scream. And they fail. Look at him though, he kinda does look like a fluorescent plastic bag just wrapped around his face. I agree, we're being treated like lab rats. So he's just going around with this hypothesis, wanting to test, you know, his theories with other groups and obviously whatever comes true or false, it's more data points for him to get a safer, you know, pass when it's his chance. Ooh! Back to the Kun family. Okay. So his last name isn't Agero Agni. It's Agero is his first name. Agni may be middle name, I don't know. And Kun is the last name. Abandoned son of the Kun family. Because his own sister was not able to arise to the Zahad princess position, I'm assuming. While Maria did, and Maria betrayed us, the mom told us. Never trust these hoes ever again. Cruel betrayal. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> That shit hit personally. <laughs> Rack was sleeping the entire time daydreaming about Snickers. As soon as a fight happens, he just gets up. Let's go! <laughs> Who 
Hmm. That was very personal, though. I want to know more about the Kuhn family, man. It's like a clock of 1 to 10. Okay, so he's not Ivan Kill. Not even fucking close. He is Yu Han Sung, which is actually a Korean name. He's the director. Got it. He's super, super important? Another test of luck? You just open the correct door. Every one of these tests is just RNG. So well, no. The Shinsu test kind of was RNG, dependent on your, you know, personal latent talent. This one is just pick a door. Any door. Oh, shit. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's down there? All the corpse? All the bodies that failed, maybe? Alright, pick a door, guys. Is there a right answer? Like, what are the clues we have? 1 to 10 on that clock? The amount of doors we have? It just seems like RNG. Is there even a point? Is there even a fucking reason to even think about what's gonna happen? Let's just pick a fucking random door because it doesn't really look like there's anything patterns here to you know go off of, right? Just red doors. There's three of us. There's ten on the clock. Kuhn analytical skills. So this is the inner machinations of Kuhn. Okay. 10 minutes, 12 doors. <laughs> the rack just climb up the wall? This is instant coffee. Instant coffee in Tower of God? This is. Because, like, instant coffee, like, Koreans fucking love their instant coffee, but. That's weird to see this kind of modern product in. Cafe Latte! Exactly! This is. And exact. So, when you use instant coffee. A lot of people will get like a spoon to stir it, but it's like, nah, just use the plastic wrapper. <laughs> Someone who actually thinks has appeared. I feel like... Sometimes, there's too many signals. And when there's too many signals, it becomes noise. This is what noise is. It's irrelevant information that makes you think that something else might be happening and you might be distracting yourself with all these different noise without realizing that there's a clear signal. Maybe this is all just bullshit. Maybe it actually means something. I don't fucking know. Which door do we pick? What is the significance of the five minutes? Is this all distraction? They were lovers? Isn't this incestual? How does that work? Because this is the Kuhn family. We're Agero Agni. Is that one branch? Is there multiple branches? So like technically this isn't really incestual if she's like super super far away distant cousins? Like how Rudy's Grey Rat and Eris Grey Rat works? I, I don't really know, but apparently they were lovers. <laughs> Okay. Why are you thinking about your past lover, bro? Have siblings. So it, it kind of, it pretty much was incestual. Yeah, it was. So interesting. Kun Agero Agni. He has his own actual sister, but he was tempted by Maria, and he ended up helping Maria become the princess of Zahad. And then, that was a downfall of him. He got betrayed. What about his own real sister then? Hmm. <laughs> like, if this is the Kun Mark, the entire clan, then I'm gonna assume Agiro Agni is like a separate branch. The way he looks at Rachel is the way that he used to look at Maria. Ah, uh, so he can empathize now. Hmm? <laughs> Bro was just enjoying his instant coffee. <laughs> Kun was having a fucking schizo attack the entire time, thinking about his fucking past incestual lover when we should have been thinking about which fucking door to take. <laughs> Alright, what's going on, bro? <laughs> the rack chew the door? <laughs>
Are you sure we should do this? Are, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> well, okay. Is that the green? Green's good, right? Green good? Rack is the one that clutched this test for us? I thought Kun would show us his giga brain, but he started to have a schizo attack about his past incestual lover. And then Rack just clutched out of fucking nowhere. Okay? Because I felt like it? <laughs> Damn! The hunter's instinct, dude! <laughs> There's no logic being applied here. There's no theories. Bro went off the vibes. He's like, you know what? I think it's this door. Fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> Instinct. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No. no. It was green. It was all green, though. Green is good, right? So the five minute was an actual deal. Okay, so in fact, the fluorescent fucking, you know, plastic wrapper dude, he actually gave us good information. Any door in the five minutes. Okay, the purpose of this test was to kind of bait people with so many different noise so that they wouldn't realize that, holy shit, we have to clear in five minutes. And they would try to spend all that time thinking about what doors to open and by that time, already five minutes had passed and you would have failed. So it's about... Decisiveness? Luck? Deduction my ass, bro. <laughs> Luck? <laughs> Luck? Decisiveness? He knows all about it. Damn. Rack went from just like a random alligator to kind of comedic relief to like a really important person who's like critically crucial. Like every one of our teammates fills kind of a role. A companion who will open doors without hesitation. Rack looking real fucking nice in this lighting. You know what? Rack might be one of my favorite characters. Like, I think it's safe to say he's fun. He, he's just so fucking fun and different from someone, some, everyone else. <laughs> Don't you want to protect those eyes which don't know doubt? Palm. Those innocent eyes that hasn't been betrayed yet, like Marie. Are you implying that Rachel is going to betray Palm unless she already... She pretty much has by, like, leaving him behind. And he's chasing after. And once we meet, what's going to happen? And Kun was already, already saying the way that Bam looks at Rachel was the same way Kun looked at Maria. So now they'll be able to overcome their past traumas, or at least Kun will be able to with the Yaoi ship Bam Kun. I see it. Yeah, that bag. What is that bag? Metaphorically and literally? What's in that bag, bro? <laughs> She's gonna threaten to cut off his fucking blanket if you don't find the answer. <laughs> what the fuck is this guy? This dude's entire thing is being like a religious nut job. And he just believed. <laughs> Alright. The power of Christ compels you. Chibisu, why are you looking so fucking cool right now? What the fuck? He figured it out? Did Kun even know about this? Wait, 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 wait. Did Kun even know about this? The fact that it takes one full rotation for five minutes? Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! He He's a gigabrain! Wow! <laughs> Because <laughs> he's supposed to be seemingly useless, but he's so fucking smart. <laughs> Shibisu gotta go, go. Yo, who's smarter? Kun or Shibisu, bro? Kun versus Shibisu. Ah, it's probably gonna be Kun, right? I mean, he seems to be way more of an important character. Shibisu seems like a lesser minor, you know, supporting character. But it's cool to know that Shibisu is actually this fucking smart. Okay, we get to know what he's good at. 
He was a paid actor? Wreck the strongest and smartest. <laughs> At night, he takes a wee little rest. Maria. Okay. <laughs> Do I want to protect his eye? <laughs> you, well, Pom so I think there's a lot of innocence here, right? There's a lot of innocence and purity in Pom. He doesn't really know the cruel, I guess, nature of the world, that tower that Kun seems to already encounter. So Kun will try his best to make sure Pom doesn't feel betrayed or be left behind like he was. But that also implies that we're going to get to a point where Rachel will abandon Bum. She already has, but like something even worse beyond that. This makes me really scared for when we first meet Rachel. Like when are we going to actually meet Rachel during these testing grounds? Like I have no good feelings about this. The way that they're setting up Rachel and Bum and the way that Kun is talking about his sister, and then the way that Yu Han Sung just said, like, don't you want to protect his eyes? Like, this is all hinting towards, like, a disastrous, you know, <laughs> Damn. He gonna protect them eyes. <laughs> so she wasn't ahead. And he just kind of spoiled his panels in the, you know, episode one and two cut content. But... Rachel, so basically, this is the 400 to 200 calling. So she's in a part of a different cohort. Why was she late? Who the fuck are these dudes, bro? Rachel's got, like, huge dude with the cleaver as a companion and someone else. But I wonder why she's showing up late even though she entered early. Only three? 400 to 200. But this time, it was 400 to 3. They killed everybody? Rachel kind of insane? Or is it the big guy that's kind of insane? They killed everyone. What the fuck? What? <laughs> so you decided to call everybody? It's his fault. He did an untimed death match, but what he didn't realize is that we would kill everybody. 30 minutes. That's so cool how... Like, we already know what an irregular Princess Zahad is, but, like, they are so important that Yuhan Sung would explicitly, you know, ask, like, if there's, like, two of those, you know, people, groups of people. We don't know? I mean, Rachel is a regular, right? The upper. Quanta is funny, I guess. Yeah, I don't really know him. He just showed up isn't he? as like a test admin, but he's, he's pretty funny, yeah? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You planned this? Wait, wait, what is this? This is like a Denden Mushi looking thing, but... He planned this to happen? He expected Quan to do something like this? To only have three people? What is the implication here? I really am a genius. This is all according to my plans. <laughs> Why is Lerro in a fucking commercial, bro? Banana black. What? What is this? Look. <laughs> Why is he on a poster? Bro? I love how Kuno it just like sits on Rack. Rack is like a fucking bed. Shimizu. What? First time. Palm and Shimizu interact. Yo, helps him out. Gets like a banana drink. Yo, start of a beautiful friendship. A lucky boy, he says. Because the Shinsu stage, 25th of bomb. Rack Wraith Razor. The leader! Okay, Rack. Yes, sir. What the fuck is that thing? I keep seeing it around. It's like a big blob of black. Like, what is that thing? Okay, I. 
I'm sorry. She, she was like, you do look very ordinary. You, you could be background character 256 in a webtoon for sure. But um, I don't really think so. I think he has... I, he's not as flashy, I guess, but I don't think he looks very ordinary. I guess compared to some of the other designs here. Shibisu is getting inspired because Bam looks very normie like him. And the fact that Bam is able to progress without realizing that this is a fucking irregular. This is the main character show inspires. <laughs> so this is like a delusion inspiration, but whatever works for you, bro. What is it? Bonus test! Uh, it? Okay. Yeah, it's a bonus test. You win this test? You pass all the entrance exam. Okay, I am interested. Even he got up! Laura! Even he got up! That's how significant this test is! Yeah. This person's design is also very interesting. This person has been in a gimp suit fucking people up with that staff thing. Like, I don't know. Crown game. Is that the end of the episode? Not yet, not yet. Okay. Steal the crown. Ooh. Battle Royale, five groups. Oh, it's basically King of the Hill, right? Gets the crown, you wear it, you gotta stay on the top, and whoever has the crown at the end wins. If you leave the chair, the game ends, and do we lose? What happens then? You have to stay on that chair until the timer runs out, or everyone loses. Yeah, sounds like it's kind of trash to go in early. Why not just like stay at the very, like, in enter as the last round, and then just like go all out and, you know, save your energy. I guess there is that trade-off too to make you incentivized to act early. Uh, Rachel's team. Ra Ra Rachel's team, right? A new powerful weapon. He noticed, he noticed the blonde hair? <laughs> He's always gonna be sleeping though. Nope, fuck your strategy, Shibisu Anax going in. He's not wrong! <laughs> Hats is not wrong, but like, it doesn't matter what ra round it is. We just have to win. I mean, yeah, but like, just do it, right? Just fucking win, right? What's your excuse? <laughs> Rack is like super. He can just sniff out the 13 month series weapon. Crown game. Crown game. What was that? Why did you look at Black March? Is Black March resonating here? Because of the existence of other 13 month series? Anak? Sword? It sees it? And it's like, mm, my brother, my sister. Is that that kind of deal with the swords? What is that? Can Shibisu actually do martial arts? Can he? Because, <laughs> like, he does these... You know? <laughs> I don't think he can actually do martial arts, though. <laughs> Let's get on the Anak bus. That's a tail, right? And you're already done. <laughs> and he's done. Rack is a fan! This is not fair, dude. How are they supposed to compete with the Princess of Zahad? So, like... <laughs> yeah, we're gonna finish this up. So, if Black March is a needle that does piercing and, you know, stabbing, then is... Whatever her blade is, is this, like, a whip? Because it seems like not all, like, Princess series, the 13-month month series, they're all just, like... They're not. They, I haven't seen, like, a katana just yet. They're all, like, different types of weapons. Oh. Oh. There's a... Oh, okay. 
It was never like even close from the fucking beginning. Like her physical defense is so fucking high. It wasn't even fucking close. Also, first person, first person that Rock Rack has acknowledged a lizard and not a turtle. Because I guess Anak does look like a lizard. I guess yeah. Do the alligators prey on lizards? One v three. It's not even close. Who is this girl? She's in Rachel's team. It was the other girl. Besides the big dude. Have we seen her from... Maybe we saw her in a trailer. I don't know. The eye makeup, I, I don't know. She seems important though, yeah? She looks at Anak. With interest. Wait! They got a plan? Nah, it's mine. Damn! Rachel! Yeah, it's not fair at all, dude. <laughs> that should be the optimal strat, right? Shibisu should wear the crown, sit there, and then Ana can hot shit defend Shibisu. But looking at there's like a dash there, what's she about to say? <laughs> I don't know, she feels like it. <laughs> Next round. Rachel again! And that is the episode. Damn, dude. Today's episode. I mean, every episode has been pretty fucking peak. But a lot of things to unpack immediately as we understand the backstory of Kun. So, his name isn't really Kun. It's Kun Agero Agni. Agero Agni, I'm assuming, is like the first and middle name. And Kun is the last name. And Agero got betrayed by Maria, who is a half-sibling who seduced Kun to help her rise as the Zahad princess. And while doing that, Kun's own sister was not able to rise, and therefore our family was exiled from the main branch. That's kind of the interpretation that I'm getting. So ever since then, mom told Kun, never trust these hoes ever again. But there's also a delicate way that Kun looks at Maria, and the way that Pam looks at Rachel, and... Basically, Kun wants to protect Bam's eyes. This shit is so gay. There's nothing wrong with that, but I get to see why there's so much Bam Kun, you know, relationship, you know, shipping memes. Now, Shibisu has been fucking sick, dude. Shibisu kind of popping off, bro. I thought that he was, truly was like a lucky nobody, but he does carry his own weight. How? Brain, Giga Brain. He knew immediately everything. Kun was distracted, you know, thinking about his sister. But Shibisu just figured it out, like, on the fucking spot and did it. But even when Kun can't do it, we need to have other companions, right? You need to have a team that can support you. It looks like the purpose of this test, Yuhan Sung is trying to teach us the importance of teammates and how important it is to have a group of people when you're climbing the tower together. So I have no doubt that the cohort, the amount of people that we're networking right now, maybe they're going to be important after we clear the exam and we, clear, we we climb the tower together. But I wonder exactly how many people are even going to be able to pass this test. And then there was some other stuff with like, you know, Rachel showing up late. Apparently they killed off everyone else. There's only three survivors. Sounds like Yuhan Sung kind of planned that based on his comments about I'm such a genius. And we're into this bonus game where the last person standing on with the crown gets to just pass all of the tests. I don't think Bomb, Kun, and Rack is gonna win. Cause like, we're still on episode 4. And, well, episode 3 actually. I don't even know actually how, like, the pacing of this anime, but... From a lot of people, I, I did hear that the pacing of season 1 is so bad that we don't really get anywhere. So I was assuming that the entire season was gonna be the series of tests. And if that is the case, then it's probably unlikely that they would be able to just, like, make Bomb win. And then have the main character's team sit out for the rest of the season. It just doesn't make sense. So I wonder which team will win. Maybe Shibisu will stay on top and win. Maybe it's some kind of meme team that we would have never fucking guessed and it's just all for jokes. I don't really know, but I am enjoying this anime a lot. And we'll see you on next Tuesday. But that's it from me. If you're still here, if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlists for more content. And until next time, take care.